In this lesson, I'll teach you a brand new technique I've created for making hover and focus states in Webflow. I'm so excited about this one, it's gonna change the game for so many people. So in the variables panel, we'll create a new collection and we'll call this state and we'll hit create. And then from here, we're gonna create a number variable. We'll call this on and we'll set its value to one. Then we'll make another number variable. We'll call this off and set its value to zero. Then we'll create a mode here. We'll call this mode active. And we'll go ahead and switch the on variable to zero. We'll switch the off variable to one whenever it's active. Now we'll head over to this text element and we'll connect its opacity here to being off by default. So it's hidden. And then we'll head over to the entire card. And whenever we hover this card under our variable modes, we'll switch our state to active. So when we hover the card, it reveals the content. Now we might also want this content to slide up. So under custom properties, we'll apply a transform and we'll go ahead and translate of Y. And in here, we're gonna do a calc. And within that calc, we wanna say, we want it to be pushed down by two rim. And then we'll say times, we'll say one for now. Now we're gonna replace that one in here with the actual variable of off. So that way this transform is off by default. And when we hover, it becomes on, so it's sliding down. Now we want to reverse that, so we'll switch it to on by default, so it'll be pushed down by two rim. And when we hover, it slides up, that transform goes to off. So we can apply the same thing to this sort of image here. So I'll go ahead and apply a transform, and I'll paste in that value. And in this case, we're going to switch the image to use scale. And we want it to have a scale of one. And in this case, I'm going to make it scale up by an additional 0.2 on hover. So if I were to apply that, we'll notice that that scale is on by default. When we hover in, the scale becomes off. Now in this case, I'm actually gonna switch that. So I'll make the scale off by default. And whenever we hover, it's going to scale up. So that increased scale will be applied. Now we can apply this to things like buttons as well. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and set this arrow here to have a transform. And we'll go ahead and apply this. In this case, we're going to rotate the arrow. And what we wanna do is rotate it 45 degrees. And we want that to be off by default. So we'll go ahead and switch that to off. And so that way, when we hover, it's gonna be on. We'll set our entire button wrap here to uh, go ahead and set the hover state here and switch the state over to active. So we hover that and we have the transform. Now we're also going to, if we copy this uh, again, let's go ahead and uh, head to this text element here. And here we want to slide it up. So I'll move it up by negative 100%. Now I'm gonna do that with a transform. So I'll go ahead and say transform and I'll paste that in. And then we're going to um, translate of Y, translate Y. And in this case, we want to do negative 100%. And we're gonna want that to be here because it's off by default. Whenever we apply it, the text is sliding up. I wanna switch that, so I'll make it on by default. And that way, whenever we hover, the text slides down and it kind of stays in sync with the arrow, which is also moving down to keep that motion consistent. Now, because this is a variable and we're just switching our state on hover, to be the active state um, on this entire button wrap here, then whenever we hover this entire card, it's also gonna trigger the button hover because that state we switched on this card here is also gonna apply to that button. Now, if we don't want that to happen, we can just head to the button element and we can switch its default state to the base state by default so it no longer inherits state from its parent. And that way, when we uh, hover over the card, it doesn't affect the button. We have to hover over that button directly. In most cases, though, I've been wanting for so long to be able to quickly throw switch the trigger from a button to the card. So this is super helpful to just have this on by default. Now, one thing we'll notice here is on mobile, when there's actually no hover, we might want some of this content to be revealed by default. And also, if we were to tab onto this button element, we might want to reveal that content. So the way we can do that is instead of using these actual hover states natively in Webflow, we'll go ahead and clear that from our card and from our button. 
we can use a little bit of CSS instead to make this super reusable. So what we'll do is anytime we have an attribute of data trigger, we'll be able to include multiple keywords in that value, keywords like focus, hover, or default. For any with the focus keyword, then we'll listen for any children inside like buttons or links. And when we focus on those children, we'll go ahead and apply the active state to that parent. Now for any devices that support hover, if we have the hover keyword on this element, then whenever we hover it, we'll switch everything to the active state. For devices that do not support hover, like touch devices, if we have the keyword default on that element, then this element's gonna receive its active state by default on those touch devices. So if we were to go ahead and save this, we'll notice on this card here, I can go ahead and apply a data trigger. And if I include the keyword hover, then whenever I hover this element, it gets the state here. Now, if I tab onto a link inside of this element, it's not getting that state. So if I want this to also trigger on focus, I can just add a space and add the keyword focus. The order we add these keywords doesn't matter. So now when I tab into this card here, we'll notice it's receiving that focus state like so. And I really don't need this arrow to be pointed down by default on touch devices. And I don't need this image to be scaled up by default on touch devices either. I only want this text element to be revealed on those touch devices. So what I can do is give it a data trigger and I'll say default. And that way on touch devices, this element here will be in the active state by default and other, all other elements will not be. So if we were to go ahead and publish that, and if we were to just kind of on this live site, we uh, were to tab on to this element here, we'll notice it's triggering. If we hover, it's triggering. Now, if we inspect and if we click this uh, icon here, we can see how it'll work on touch devices. And we'll notice that the text is now visible by default, but the image isn't scaled and the arrow isn't pointing down. So we're able to make this really reusable. So now on this um, entire button here, I might give it a data trigger and I might want it to trigger on focus and also on hover. And so now if I were to hover into this, or if I were to tab into it either way, we get this sort of hovered state. So that's how to use these new hover and focus variables to create some really dynamic and reusable interactions. To compare this to the old workflow, normally we'd have to use our custom class inside an embed. So if the class name ever changes, it would break our custom code. And then we'd have to write styles for whenever we hover the card, find the content inside and reveal it only on hover devices. Then for all devices, when we focus the card, find the content, keep it revealed. And then for devices that do not support hover, keep that content revealed by default. And if we ever wanna change how far we're pushing an element down by, we'd have to go into the custom code, find that code, and then change it all there. Whereas with this new method, we can keep all our styling visible in the style panel, and we don't have to reference these class names when we're creating these different hover states.